All right guys, so got another video here on just a big product roundup on mostly flight controllers and some ECs that I've been collecting here over the uh, last few months. Now I've stopped kind of making individual videos for every single one of these flight controllers and ECs because basically they're kind of all the same, very similar and I figure it'd be better to just do a, a roundup video and if you do want to see detailed videos on any of these uh, you guys can leave me some comments down in the comment section I think you guys also know that a lot of these are very similar they are definitely improving in terms of quality overall as time progresses I mean compared to say a couple years ago and there's a lot more on the market in terms of choices so um, there's actually a bunch more of these that I ha don't even have on the table here because I just don't have space and I'm going to try and keep this video as short as possible. So if you don't see something on here that you really are interested in seeing in more detail, um, I might have it. Let me know in the comments below if there's something that's really interesting that you would like to see more details on. I'm going to use the feedback from you guys to determine which um, ones to make additional videos on, if any. Um, on the last video I didn't get that much feedback on a lot of the products. I think the 2004 motors were the ones that I think most people are interested in the most out of everything out of all those motors that came out. Um, so yeah, you know, you know, if, 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 if there's not a lot of feedback or anything then I'm not gonna make an, another video on it unless I've got a lot of time on my hands and lately I don't. Now, yeah, again, yeah, so if you don't see something here in this video I might have it. Let me know in the comments below and um, if there's enough interest I'll try to make a video on it. Now regarding uh, what the quality of these products are like, of course you know it's going to really vary on how much you test it, how much you crash it, those kind of factors which you know I don't really go into that much detail on every single one of these. You might see them down the road. I may make, I may, I may make comments on these as I put them into builds and use them so you can maybe look for details on this in future videos but uh, you know that's that takes time and that's going to come down the road but for the most part in terms of generalities here what you're looking for are um, companies that are a little bigger they've been around for a while and you generally know what to expect from them so you know, companies like iFlight are pretty good their flight controllers and ACs have gotten a lot better over the years um, other companies that are smaller, you know, maybe just popped up, like uh, Hi-Fi on Hi-Fi on RC or JHE MCU. These, these are kind of some new kids on the block here. You know, they have some people that have you know that like their products, and then there's a few of them that have kind of fallen flat on their face as well. There's a lot of anecdotal evidence out there on the internet, Facebook, you know, etc., Instagram, and you're gonna get a lot of sort of um, I don't know. It's the the anecdotal evidence is not very convincing. I'm very skeptical of it because you don't know where it's coming from necessarily, or what the le the experience level of the user is. If they just screwed up their soldering and messed up product. I mean, I I know that there's a lot of um, high quality products out there that get very good feedback from people. Then you see someone that just totally goes crazy on Facebook and you know just rips it to shreds for some weird reason or an unknown reason they seem like a new person they don't know what they're doing you know but then um you know the, you get that someone else might who doesn't really know about that company may look at that and go, oh wow that's a pretty that's a pretty bad product and, and it turns out it comes from a pretty good company so that's why i don't trust the stuff i see on facebook anymore because it's just so much it's just all over the map so what I what I look for in terms of flight controllers and ECs are products that have been around on the market for a little while, um, companies that have been around for a little while. So you kind of have an, have an idea of you know if they're going to be around in six months. And another thing is uh, what kind of support and documentation they have. So a lot of these flight controllers and ECs, you know, they're going to come with uh, manuals. So for example, here's uh, one from HGLRC. It's going to come with a nice wiring diagram in color here. Everything is nicely labeled. Now, that, now nowadays, like the pads themselves may not be labeled. They're trying to cram a lot more stuff into smaller boards, so they're getting rid of the silk screen to 
cram more components on and also make the soldering pads bigger. And those are kind of things that I like. So I don't mind that as long as they have documentation included with the product or you can get it from their website. So I know that like Diatone, for example, and here's their new um, F722 20 by 20 board. This one doesn't have any documentation in the box, but you can go to their website. They have a very good web support website and download their manuals with the wiring diagrams for all their flight controllers uh, off their website, even for older products as well, which is good. So, you know, so companies like companies like Diatone and iFlight, HGRC, they've been around a while. They have a lot of products on the market, older stuff. And if you happen to pick up an older item, maybe on sale, for example, a lot of people do that. You can still pick up their manuals on their websites. And you can see again, trend here, bigger solder pads and no silk screening, like there's a little bit there, but for the most part, it's all gone. And I actually prefer bigger solder pads and just refer to a wiring diagram because, you know, once you wire it up, you're not going to look at the silk screening again. And I'd rather have bigger solder pads versus smaller ones. Anyway, I'm going to go quickly over each one of these, just kind of quickly show you them. And maybe I'll point out a few things like, you know, uh, well, bigger solder pads, etc. As I, as I go along in the video. So, you know, this is kind of uh, not necessarily all that well organized, but you'll, you'll get a little, little tips and tricks here as I go along in the video. All right, so we'll start off with this one here. This is a new uh, all-in-one board from HDLRC. It's the Zeus 5 all-in-one. It's one to two S board. And so HDLRC, the, this one will probably have a wiring diagram here in the bottom. Yeah, it's down at the bottom here. And it comes with your typical stuff. Um, most of these should come with like an XT30 or an XT60 with some wiring, a capacitor, and also some mounting hardware. See this mounting hardware is also included here in this bag along with what looks like plugs. And the thing about this board that I thought was interesting is that this has built-in Wi-Fi. So this is a very light, you know, whoop style board. Uh, I think it's five amp ESCs. Uh, it's going to be for your lighter whoop builds or cinema whoop builds or maybe like toothpick builds. Um, it has two UARTs and it's got the pin through holes along with the pins there for a receiver. If you have one of those receivers that you want to just like solder run directly to the top of the board here, you could do that. I don't, I personally don't prefer that method. This does have some fairly big solder pads, but they have silk screening on here as well. And you can see that uh, the, you can also attach to the side of the board here. It's very hard to see, but all of these contact points on the side so you can, are, are solderable. So you can solder, you know, the wires to the side here. Uh, this, the, the thing that this board is really unique is this Wi-Fi chip here. So there's a Wi-Fi chip on board and this is, I guess, is a Wi-Fi antenna, I think. And um, you can connect to this board via the SpeedyB app and not the USB port. So sometimes in some of these builds, the USB port's kind of hard to access. And that's what kind of the goal of this. I think we're going to see more of this in the future. So I'm, I'm going to definitely be using this one uh, fairly soon. Not sure when, but yeah, this will probably come out coming out in a future build. But yeah, I like the fact that you can connect it via USB or via Wi-Fi. Okay, got another uh, HDLRC all-in-one board here, the Zeus 25. So this is obviously 25 amp. You see it's three to six S on this one. So some of these boards, you know, you know if it's like um, three S and and uh, they may not work on two S. I'm pretty sure when they say three to six S, it really does mean three to six S. So if if not, they would say two to six S. And I get that question a lot. You know, oh, it says three to six S. Well, two S works. Two S work, and typically it doesn't because it has to do with the voltage regulator. Otherwise, they would specify that on the uh, product specifications. And again, you can see here nice big solder pads on this one. Uh, this one I think is a I think it's an F seven, I believe. Yep. So here it is all in the manual. It is a F seven two two, so it should have a whole bunch of UARTs, three two bit ESCs and has a five volt and a 10 volt regular. So five volt, two amp and a 10 volt, one amp. So yeah, and this is a trend these days. Um, uh, they're including two, two voltage regulators and that's because uh, for DGI builds, if you want to put this on a, a DGI build with an air unit, of course the air units don't support 6S. So they have the 10 volt, uh, 10 volt EC on there to support uh, those guys that are building with air units. Um, also, it's not bad for using it with Vista as well because uh, you know, 6S voltage on Vista does work, but you know, it will create more heat 
on the vistas. So which the heat is pretty bad. So uh, and in in uh, in those cases where I have a 10 volt or 9 volt uh, regulator available, even even with a vista build, I will use it just because it's uh, it'll also filter the power as well and and, and this is better for the vista overall. So this is another trend for a lot of these flight controllers. You get two uh, voltage regulators. And 32 BDCs are becoming more and more common now. And of course, you get your uh, XT30 here, capacitor, and uh, rubber grommets for mounting. And here's just uh, another one last look at it. And 